Hi guys, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. We're going to paint a Petoskey stone. The Petoskey stone is a fossil that's found on Michigan shore. And I love painting water, you know that, so I put that in here for today. And as you know, I use Arches watercolor paper. I used a two and a half by three and a half inch size paper for this painting. It is so small, but it's like an art trading card. I could paint this and I could trade it with other artists. And I won't because I like this one. So <laughs> let's get going. So I am starting my painting off not with wet paper, but I'm wetting it and then just dabbing on color. It's very light. This is not a very heavy painting, um, which I enjoy with the seaside pictures. So in the sky, I've used a little bit of a cerulean blue. And then I put in a, a soft purple shadow, which is the underside of a wave. And then I put a tiny, tiny bit of uh, raw sienna for the sand, very, very soft. And then right now I'm creating a horizon line with a little bit of marine blue. And then I'm going to add in a pop of sap green. That's a very bright green. The two of them together, they're being mixed on water, or excuse me, they're being mixed together. It's wet on wet in that top section there. So these colors are going to blend. And those two colors make a beautiful um, seaside or oceanside wave color um, that we see when the light is hitting a wave. And I love, I just love that color. So carrying on, um, I am painting in just like defining the top of the wave and the bottom of the wave. And I already put this purple in there for the bottom part of the wave. So what I'm gonna do is just pop in a little bit of cerulean blue at the underside of this wave because I'm looking to define it a little bit more, but I'm keeping it very light. Here's a little bit of Payne's Gray that uh, touches in. This is marine blue now. And I'm having it touch in and this wave, it's not completely wet. So I'm controlling how that water is going to flow down. While that top is drying, I am going down to another section. This section is not something that's gonna to touch any of those wet parts, so it's not going to bleed. And uh, so I, while the top's drying, uh, what I'm doing is sketching out some of the shadow of the rocks and some of the dark areas. And I don't mind putting some of the light and the dark ones in there. It helps me know where are these rocks gonna go and what's in them. And I'm putting a tiny bit of uh, different colors in. The black tone is more of a neutral with a tiny bit of purple in it. And then there's a, a lighter uh, tone, which is a repeat of uh, raw sienna. And then I'm using a tiny bit of yellow and a permanent, um, permanent yellow orange um, to mix in with this rock that I'm doing right now and uh, I'm using very soft touches nothing really harsh because I want to build this color up and this gives me a chance too for me to see do I like the colors that I'm selecting for this painting do they work together and if I need to make a change I still can
inside the middle of this Petoskey stone, use a little bit of burnt umber. And all I'm gonna do is touch in a little bit of where the darker areas are within this shell, just to give me an idea where it is. You can see I defined that Petoskey stone a little bit more. I added in some of those dark little nuggets in the middle of it. And so while that's drying, I'm going back up to my wave and I want to define this wave more. And what do I mean by define? Well, I need to have dark in there. If you have the dark, you can see the light. And so what I'm doing is adding a little bit more darkness where that wave would be crashing down underneath that wave. That's where the darkness is. So I got to put that in there. I'm not going to do a, a lot of heavy detail on that beach or that wave. And the reason why is the Petoskey stone is the highlight of this watercolor picture. But you know me, I love vibrant colors. So I'm gonna layer some more colors in here um, just to create more depth and add a little bit more pop to it. As I'm moving into the rocks, what I'm doing is what on what here. I want to have the colors play, blend, and the way to do that is I'm putting water on there, but I'm not letting it soak. It's not super duper wet. There is a little bit of a sheen on this. It doesn't look like it's dry. There's a sheen on there. And uh, that little bit of a sheen allows me to dab in other colors and it's going to just like mix in with the others. It's going to explode on the paper. And that is just so much fun. So I'm going to add a variety of colors in here. I've got a little bit of raw sienna. I've got some burnt umber 
tiny bit of neutral or black will come in here and um, I'm rotating working around while this paper is wet you can see these white areas that's where the um, the sheen is going to be like there's dots on it because that's where the sun is reflecting on it and so you paint around those you don't paint on them and that just makes it easier you don't have to add white gouache on it later then I'm going to use a little bit of a Sakura gel pen. It's a white pen and it really has some nice pop to it. And I'm going to use it to outline some of the details of the Petoskey stone. If I do this picture again, I'm not going to do that. I think that it's defined enough. The other thing, if I do it on a larger size, which I think I will, I'm going to use a splattering technique to create sand. So the sand you see around it, I would put little crunches of paper and I would block off these rocks and block off the wave above. And so where you see the sand, I would be splattering that and I use quinacridone uh, scarlet, a little bit of permanent yellow, orange, yellow ochre, a tiny, tiny bit of black. And those colors really come through nicely and it looks like a sand. If you look at a sand, you've got all sorts of different kinds of colors because sand is just rocks. So this is finishing up pretty nicely and it's a very simple picture. Um, I finished off the horizon line because I wanted to define it better. I want you to be able to see that there's a shoreline back there and that's gonna help this wave pop as well. So I appreciate you guys joining me today 
and I would love to have you back another time. Let me know in the comment or the community section what you would like uh, us to be painting and I'll do a poll so you can uh, let me know that as well. I so appreciate having you on this channel and my Patreons who donate, they actually give money the price of a coffee cup in order for me to be able to provide this channel to you and to many others. You guys take care and we'll see you again soon.